Okay, so I'm going to show how to disassemble a uh, HP Pavilion DV6, uh, specifically uh, uh, DV6-6C13CL. So this one was having a fan issue, um, but it looks like there was also some liquid spilled on it. So um, basically what you want to do is first remove the battery. So slide this over to the left, take the battery out, then slide this over to the right. It'll make a gap here. So you can pull this out, so just pull on it. I actually took all the screws out already for most of the stuff, but um, usually after you take out the battery, what you want to do is hold the power button for a few seconds, just to make sure any power is drained out. Do that. All right, once you do that, you want to remove all the screws. There's one in the corner here, one here, then there's four here, two, three, four. You got one up here, one in this corner, then you got the um, four down here, one, two, three, four, you got one here, and then underneath the panel, you have one screw in this little hole here, let's see if you can see that, and then there will be two screws here, once you remove those two screws, lift up on the back of the cables and just pull them up like this, so do that for both sides. Make sure lift on the back of the cable, just like that. Okay. Then you, after you remove the screws, you can actually lift this up and set this aside. All right. Then you got one screw holding the CD drive in place, so remove that one. And then you can slide this out. Set that aside as well. Then you got four screws holding the hard drive in place. Remove those and then pull this connector up, just like that. And then you can lift this and set the hard drive aside as well. If you want, you can upgrade it with an SSD, but this one has a regular spinning hard drive. Then you got one screw down in the corner here. You got another screw down in this corner here, and then one screw up here. And then once you get all those screws out, there's another three screws that are here, um, or there should be. This one only had one here, but yeah, there's most likely gonna be three screws here, so remove those three. So once you get all those screws out, then you want to flip it over, open up the screen, and then you got to remove the keyboard. So to remove the keyboard, what you want to do is actually in the CD slot, um, you can actually see there's a little hole here. This is the back of the keyboard, so you can push on the back of that, um, and that'll help you release it like this. Um, but if if it's too tough to release that, what you can do is get one of these pry tools and you just go around from the top and kind of pry it. So actually there's some clips under here that you want to like get out. So you can either use a pry tool, um, which is the easiest way. Um, anything like thin and flat um, has to be pretty thin, otherwise it won't work. The other way is if you were to push up from here, you can actually um, go from the bottom and then kind of bend it so it curves like this and then that'll help you like pull it away from the the clips but the easiest way is to use one of these that's the best way to remove it there's actually also some clips on the sides as well so go along with that when i first removed this it was kind of stuck from the liquid but um yeah once you remove that um the bottom piece you just need to wiggle it to pull it up a little bit like this so actually there's a um, clip here holding this in place the keyboard so what you want to do is just like the other clips that are on the other computers you lift this up flip it up like that and the cable will come out to put it back you actually have to do it from the other angle let me see if I can show that so to put it back you have to have it at this upside down angle and then you can actually put this cable down like that and then guide it on there and then once you guide it on there slip um, put the flap back down. So, all right, so set that aside. So this computer, because it's kind of difficult to do on camera, I'm not going to actually show the reassembly process, but it's basically just the reverse of, of taking it apart. So underneath the keyboard, there's some screws here. You got one here, one here, and you got another one up here, one down here, and then you got two here and one more here. So remove all those screws. And then what you want to do is you want to unlatch these cables, remove this one, this one you don't have to remove, there's one down here, remove that one, and then if you can, 
grab the little plastic part, not the, the ribbon cable itself. Um, and then kind of like just wiggle that out. All right, so you get that one out and then this cable. So remove just those three. Those are the most important ones because when we remove this, it's gonna, those are the ones that are on the, attached to the top case. So once you get that, what you wanna do is get your nails between the layer here or a pry tool. And then you just pull on this like that, just like that. And once you get a gap like that, you can push on this with your finger and then just go around. And while you're going around, you can pull on the edges just to release those clips. Go all the way around, just like that. And then you can set this aside. All right. Once you got that, then you get to the motherboard. There'll be one screw down here and one screw here holding the fan. So remove those two. Um, you'll wanna remove this cable, flip this latch up, pull this cable out. Then you got the um, charging adapter cable or the DC jack cable. So to remove that, what you wanna do, let's see here. So usually you'll just lift the motherboard up a little bit. Oh, it's kind of blurry. So lift the motherboard up a little bit and then wiggle this like that. And it'll slow, just do it slowly. Don't pull too hard or you can break these and then that'll come out. So once you got that up, now you have to remove the keyboard assembly. So there's actually also this cable here for the speaker that you wanna remove. So what you wanna do for that, um, pretty much just like the other ones that I've done on other videos. Let's see. So just use your nails, get on two sides of it, and then just slowly wiggle it like this, and it'll come out just like that. And then move this cable out of the way. It's held down with some tape. So move that out of the way. And then you wanna release the LCD connector here. Normally there's a pull tab, but this one's broken. But so normally you would just pull it straight up, but if you can't do that, usually just use like a pry tool or your fingernail and then just pull up on the edges like that and it'll come up. And then there's a little connector here. Oh, let's see here if I can show that. Okay, so there's a connector up there. Oh, jeez. There's a connector up there that's attached to the LCD connector. So you want to be careful with that. Just make sure, um, try and get grab as close to the connector as possible and wiggle it. And it should just unplug, just like that. All right, so once you got that, move the, you got all the cables out. Okay, so move that out of the way. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna have to, you're gonna have to remove this speaker grill or not really remove it, but at least just get it out of the way. So what I do is I just grab on this and kind of just pull on it. Um, you might have to pull a little hard. It has some little clips that are holding it, but yeah, um, it was a little bit easy because I didn't press it all the way down, but it'll be a little tough to pull this out. So it's attached on this side, so make sure not to pull it up too hard, and then you can just actually hold, keep this out of the way. So that way when you remove this, let's see, is there another screw? Oh, there's actually one more screw down here. So remember, uh, make sure to remove that. Let's see here. Okay. All right. Make sure to remove that screw. Once you got all those screws out, you can actually um, hold this cable out of the way and you can actually lift the whole motherboard up at an angle like this. So make sure none of the cables are in the way. And you just lift this motherboard up and out. So at an angle, you can kind of wiggle it. Uh, let's see, make sure nothing's stuck under there. Oh, so these cables are actually in the way. You have to make sure to remove this as well, actually. So, let's see here. You don't actually have to remove it completely, but you just have to disconnect this because it's hitting the plastic. So this connector um, is actually for the, I believe this is for the CD drive. 
yeah so that goes actually for the the cd drive connector here but you don't have to remove it you just have to disconnect the this connector so you don't have to undo all this cabling but you just want to remove that um, and then also this one this one's a little tricky so usually i'll use like my nails and then just go on both sides but you might have to use like a pry tool so just pull it out like that and there you go everything should be no longer holding onto the board so now that you got all of those out just lift this up and then at an angle and then you can take this out so make sure when you put it back you're gonna have to put it again at this angle uh, when you do that make sure that this cable is not trapped under it and make sure this cable is not trapped under it because if you trap it you're gonna have to take the screws back out and then do it again so let's see I believe this model to replace the fan I probably have to take the whole heatsink out but I'm gonna try and do it without it so there's actually some screws on this fan so there's four screws here so you can actually remove those four screws and then this fan will actually separate um, it'll get a little bit caught here but you'll be able to remove it as long as you kind of pull up this tape here so first what we're gonna do is disconnect this the fan connector so again just use like your fingernails or small tools on the side just be careful and keep wiggling it to the sides until you can get it out let's see here so let me just keep doing that this one's tough to remove but once you get it there you go all right and then the fan to remove the fan you're going to need the smaller um the smaller screwdriver so the rest use this ph1 um, this one you're going to have to use um, probably a ph0 or a ph00 but let me see i'll try with a zero first this should work yep so a zero works fine so just remove these oh, screws dude. come on bro okay with the screws just like that. GPS. Okay. So you got all of that up. Flip it back over. Let's see here. This tape you're gonna have to un undo from the plastic part of this fan. So just peel it up. Most of it's on the um, the heat sink, so you only have to peel up a little bit of it, just like that. Once you got that, once you, oh, there's more tape here, so make sure to remove this tape as well. Okay, so once you got that, you should be able to lift this, okay, just like that. So push the um, heat sink a little bit out. And then you should be able to lift this fan up and out. There's actually a little bit of tape on the side here as well. So just make sure it's actually a foam padding. You can actually peel this away from the, the thing. All right, don't worry if it rips. The foam doesn't really help with any air cooling much or anything. So this fan, usually um, a lot of people will just replace it. But there's actually a way you can repair this. So I'm going to show you that right now. So first I'm going to clean off the fan. Let me get a little toothbrush. Okay. So first I'm going to actually clean it off. So just hold it over like a trash can or something. Okay. And then just brush it off. Brush that off. Okay. Yeah, ignore my gross trash. So, okay. So, okay. Once you got all of that cleaned off, what you want to do is, in most cases, um, these fans to repair them. Uh, once you get it apart like those small screws usually the propeller you can actually lift it out 
So this one, yes, you can lift it out. So you can lift it. Uh, once you lift it out, you'll see it looks like this. And usually what happens is the grease in here will turn all gunky. Usually I find it happens more often when you have like a high moisture area. So if you're cooking foods with um, a lot of like water, so it gets steamy or you're using it in an environment where it's kind of humid. Um, some people they'll like bring it in their shower or something or I don't know. Um, but yeah, so if it's hot, hot and kind of humid in your house or wherever you live, it's most likely going to have this problem a lot more frequent. So, um, there's not really a way around, um, the humidity other than, I guess, using a dehumidifier and keeping it in that, like, a room where it's less humid. Um, but, so, but if you can't help that and you'd rather just repair it, I'm gonna, this is why I'm making this video. So, the fan, usually I'll just take a paper towel, clean it up like this. And then just use a toothbrush to make sure you get the dust off since it's open. Might as well. Alright. So the fan. Clean it up like that. Alright. Let's see here. Okay. Once you got that. So as you can see there's actually some gunk that's on there. Alright. Once you got that. Clean it up a little bit. Be careful with these because if you break these coils then your fan's not going to work anymore. So once you do that, I like to use um, some mobile one or some oil. Um, any oil that will kind of like work, hold up for a long time will work well. Um, don't use cooking oil because it turns gunky a lot sooner. Um, motor oil seems to work a lot better. Um, or you can get any kind of bearing, any kind of bearing oil will probably work well. So just use a needle or something like that. Get like a drop of it on there. Oh, this is going to be tough. I'm going to spill it. So what you want to do is get a drop of it. And then once you have the drop of the oil, you want to actually just put it into the, into the hole here. So drop it in there, just like that. Let's see and then put the fan on top like that now you can see before actually the fan when I turned it it wouldn't turn it would like just get stuck but now you can see this is how the fans supposed to spin so if you have um, a computer that's having a fan issue and you try and turn it and it doesn't keep spinning after you turn it that means um, the grease is bad and another way you can tell is after you move it it'll wiggle back and forth that means it, it can, like the magnets are actually able to um, push it with little effort. So usually after I do it once, I like to clean it up just so that any gunk that's in there will be cleaned out. And then just add another drop and, and do it again. So clean up the fan just like that. So the fan, these fans usually are easy enough to repair that it doesn't make sense to buy another one um, but usually the fans are also pretty cheap so if you don't mind or if you just want to be safe before opening your machine um, because if you can't take the fan apart then it's kind of gonna suck that you're gonna have to either leave the thing taken apart and then remember where everything goes or you're gonna have to put it all back together and then do it again so yeah so if you want, you can buy another fan just to have it ready, but um, usually I find most of them will, ha will have the ability to repair them. So again, just put the grease in there. Okay, this might put a little bit less, but it doesn't matter as long as it's enough to keep it lubricated. So now you can see the fan spins really well. You can even blow on it to test. So it should spin really easily. All right. Um, some of them, if your fan is making some weird like grinding sounds, sometimes this won't help it. But in most cases, it will help even even some of those. Um, in other cases, where the fan where you can't separate it like this, they'll have actually a sticker here, and you can peel up the sticker. If there's a little plastic um, or rubber piece under there, 
you can usually um, move that rubber piece out of the way and drop some grease in there. Spin the fan a few times to get the grease in. Move it up and down if you can. It'll usually have a little play. And then that'll get the grease to, to fall in here. Um, other designs, they'll actually have this in a way that you can't remove this. Or they'll put like a metal cap or just a solid piece of plastic that's part of the fan and you can't repair it. Um, if you're in a desperate situation, what you can do is you can drill a hole through that metal piece or through the plastic piece and then drip drip some, uh, some oil into there. Just make sure the hole is big enough for the drop to go in. Um, and then the top of it, you'll have to clean off with some isopropyl alcohol and stick some tape on top to get it to keep the oil from coming back out. But um, yeah, so the fan is good now. Um, before this computer, I was told it was giving a fan error message, preventing it from turning on, or it would overheat. So just make sure you do that. And also, while you're at it, usually check the fan. You can see this is very dirty. So I'm actually going to take this outside and clean it up with the toothbrush, and then I'll come back. So I'll do that real quick. Um, give me a few minutes or seconds. So if you want, you can skip about 20 seconds, um, but pretty much I just brushed it with the toothbrush, just like this. Got whatever dust I could out. And then if you want, you can blow through the back of it just to get any extra dust. Um, or you can use the little compressed air cans or air compressor, um, but I prefer to just brush it off. Usually brush it first and then you can use one of those air compressors or the can. It'll help get a lot more dust off than just using the can alone. Alright, so now you can see it's actually clean. You can see, you can actually see through it, so you can actually see my hand. So yeah, usually these things will get pretty dirty and dusty. Um, yeah, usually the more like cloth surfaces and stuff or carpet in your house, the dustier and quicker it'll get like this. So if you have, um, if your house is like hardwood floor and like leather seats and everything, then your computer will actually get a lot less dust in it. Um, so yeah, so I've had some customers where they've had their computers for like months and then I'd look at it and I'd be surprised because there's like almost no dust. So to put this back, you're going to have to hold the tape out of the way. Um, put this side in first and then get this side down. Let's see here. It's going to be tough to do it with one hand like this. Okay. Just like that. And then make sure to get this rubber piece out. Not that it does anything. All right. So put the screws back in. Just like that. If you guys are wondering what game he's playing, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, so... Alright, so just put these screws back in. Just like that. Sure, it's lined up. Okay. Let's see here. Is it lined up properly? That piece looks okay. 
right. Just make sure this gets lined up properly. There we go. Put all the screws. There we go. Get the four screws back in, put the tape back over it. It's not going to stick, but it's okay. This tape doesn't really do much except keep the fan from separating when the screws are out. And then put this connector back in. All right, make sure it's flush. Okay, once you got that, remember, keep this cable out of the way and this cable out of the way. Put it at an angle. Usually I like to line up the audio ports first. And then also make sure to get this out of the speaker out of the way. Okay. Alright. So we get the audio jacks lined up first. Put it in that angle like that. And then get all the other... There we go. So get all the other ports all lined up. Then you can plop this back down, just like that. Make sure plug in this first. It'll be a little tough because the connector is underneath, but just make sure get it lined up and then just wiggle it back in place. There we go. Put that down, Put this. lift this up, put this connector in. Go. You can check these connectors once you put the flap down. You shouldn't be able to pull it back out easily. All right. Then again, this cable. Make sure it goes back into the little guides that are on the fan, just like that. Okay. Put it back in the little guides. Make sure to plug in this little cable here. This little connector here. make sure you put it the right way as well so this one uh, on the back side you can see like the rainbow colored things so make sure it's actually with the little holes with the metal pieces up okay all right slide that back in make sure these connectors stay in and just line this up and press it down so you can tell it's in should be a little tough to lift it back up. Okay, just make sure the fan connector is out of the way. All right, so it's good. After that, snap the speaker back in place. Make sure the screw holes line up. The screw holes here and here. Just make sure they line up. Okay. Then you can just put this back in place. Just like that. All right, so you got all these cables connected. Make sure to plug this speaker back in. All right. Again, this one has the little light, uh, the little metal pieces showing, sticking up. So make sure you have it right side up. All right, so after you got all of that, grab the top panel. Oh, actually, don't forget the screws. <laughs> So now we'll put the screws back in. So make sure there's two screws holding the fan in place. There's one on the bottom and then one on the top corner here. Okay, make sure you get those in. Then you got the one screw in this bottom corner right here. There's actually a little white marking there to kind of show you. That, that's where the, the the screw goes, not the fan screw. But... Okay, so put this back in. Usually start with the top here. Go around. Just 
like that. Check the bottom. Make sure to reconnect this. Make sure to reconnect these two connectors. So one thing I didn't show was um, on the motherboard, like where all the connectors were, but hopefully if you wanted to change any of that, you should be able to figure that out. I believe this one, um, I don't remember just from looking at it a little bit earlier, but it could be, uh, I believe this one has a replaceable um, CPU, but just make sure you don't put one that's too much more powerful because otherwise, um, it can overheat the computer easily. So put these connectors back, just lift up the little tabs. Make sure to put it underneath. All right, that's the power uh, button connector. So if it doesn't power on, you might have damaged that or you didn't connect it. So trackpad connectors here. Put one back in. All right. What? Got another one. I believe these are for the lights on the front. Actually, this is for the fingerprint reader. So, okay. So, if any of those pieces aren't working, you know it's probably because you forgot something there. All right, put the screws back. on the top piece okay so once you got that I want to put the keyboard so again this is going to be difficult to show on camera but what you do is you flip this forward and then you connect it let me see if I can show it probably from the other side okay so what you do is you put this cable in here just like that You'll see the little um, notches that stick out. They'll go over these raised areas. So just put that and then push the little thing connector flap down. Then you can put the bottom of the keyboard first. And then push it all the way around. You should hear some clicking. So it'll snap into place just like that. All right. And then put this back over it over make sure to put the CD drive screws in first or the part that's under here this one only had one so I'll just put the Ow. one screw slot the CD drive back in All right. then make sure when you put the hard drive that you put this screw in first go put the screw right put the screw down here right then you got another screw then you got the other screw that goes here. Actually, wait. Yeah. Super excited about a real life live action movie Pikachu movie. CD drive screw here. Live action Pikachu movie who talks. And you put the screw here. All right. And then you got this. Make sure to lift up these two cables. And put the wireless card at an angle. Then let the cables go back down. 
Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's hard to show this stuff. Okay. Yeah, and just put these screws in. like that put the connectors in this is going to be tough to do on camera let me see here all right there we go just line it up make sure not to press too hard if it's not lined up right or you can damage it that then you put the hard drive back in just yeah, drop it in place down. put the connector in and push it down there we go snap it in place okay the hard drive screws in Now you got all the bottom pleat screws in, slide this in down at the bottom first, and then snap the edges in, just press on it. Usually I like to lift the middle a little bit so it kind of goes in easier, just like that. And then push this edge down, just like that, snap it in place. There you go, and then put the final screws in. Usually if you want, now's the time to put the battery and then test it before you can before you put all these other screws if you wanted to check it first so that you don't have to take it apart if you're not sure you got everything right all right just put all the screws back in I'm gonna zarg it for a couple of days from now because we need a win. I'm gonna zarg it like one last time. I feel like the only reason we can win 